Hello everybody, I'm Krishna. In this video, I'm going to talk about product backlog in Scrum. If you haven't watched my earlier videos on Intro to Agile and Intro to Scrum, I would encourage you to click on the below links and watch it. As you would have seen from my earlier video, Product Backlog is an ordered list of items with high priority items at the top and low priority items at the bottom. The Product Backlog can contain functional requirements, non-functional requirements, engineering requirements and any feedback that you get from any of the stakeholders gets into the Product Backlog. The backlog uh, generally can be having various hierarchy. Product backlog is at the top of the hierarchy where it encompasses all the requirements of the product. So typically the product backlog is derived from the vision of the product and it stays throughout the lifespan of the product. So a subset of the product backlog is the release backlog. A release backlog looks at the minimum set of features that is required for the product to go to the market. So typically, depending on your organization, a release backlog's time span may be from two months, three months, six months, eight months, or to a year. And a subset of this release backlog is the sprint backlog. Let us say that you are a product owner and you have been tasked the responsibility to build a product. So you call upon all the stakeholders uh, which could be the marketing team, the customer, you create a focus group, you could call upon domain experts and together all of you will brainstorm and come up with a product vision. And from the vision, you start deriving the requirements. These requirements go into the product backlog and you give a business value to each of these requirements so that it will help you in prioritizing. You have to remember that these requirements are very high level requirements and they need further refining. Now once you have come up with a set of uh, product backlog items, uh, you start thinking now what is the minimum set of requirements that I would need to go to the market. Now you pick up these requirements from the product backlog and those become the release backlog. So once you have identified your release backlog, you go back to the scrum team. So you talk to the Scrum Master and the team and you explain the product vision and the high level set of requirements that you have in the release backlog. The team spends some time in understanding those requirements and they typically pick up the top two to three requirements from the release backlog and start refining it further. During the refinement, they may start adding engineering requirements which is required for them to implement. And this could also lead to a reprioritization of feature within the release backlog. If, uh, you would be reprioritizing those backlog items based on customer priority, the implementation difficulty, the dependency between features and the urgency of getting feedback. So those requirements which are not yet refined and which are huge in size are called as epics. Now comes the question, how do you write a product backlog? Should it be a one line statement? Should it be two lines, should it be three lines, or should it be a document for each PBI item? Typically in the industry, many people use story cards. User story is a short, simple description of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires the feature. So the format for a user story is, as a type of user, I want to achieve a goal, so that the reason. For example, a user story could be, as a power user, I want my access card to override the security lock so that I can access the quadrant of area to check for intruders. Important concept when you write a user story is to be able to slice the requirement vertically so that you have a demonstrable output at the end of the sprint. As your product keeps maturing, you may start getting a lot of feedback from customers. So it may become very difficult for you to prioritize and put items into the product backlog on the run. So usually people stage the feedback into three levels. One is the raw feedback, where people may be logging into tools. The second is the unprioritized feedback, where you look at these raw feedback, you eliminate duplicates, and you just pick up those which you think is valid to the vision of the product. And number three is you move the staging from this 
unprioritized to the prioritized when you put it to the product backlog. So this staging is a tip which will help you in handling your product backlog much better. That's about it with uh, regard to product backlog. If you like this video, please like it and share it and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.